Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist to the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Origairu, aka My Teenage Rom Com Snafu, Season 2, Episode 5. Alright, and um, this episode starts off with Hikigaya talking with Komachi, his sister, and um, they pretty much smooth things over because Komachi realized that he had done something. But he was telling her that everything was fine and that nothing happened, so she was annoyed by that. Um, and you know, she just wants to help her brother, so she, you know, she, she's lived with him his entire life, her entire life technically, not really his, but uh, she's lived with him her entire life. She understands how he feels, how he thinks, and um, she also understands that others don't really get it the way she does, and she understands that they can get hurt by the way he does things. So. She, the two of them smooth things over in this conversation, and she just lets him know that he needs to try and realize that. And in order to try and help him, she makes a request of him to not let Yui or Yukino become president, because it would mean the club breaks apart. If the club breaks apart, then Hickey will end up getting hurt by that, whether he realizes it or not. Okay. And because he cares about his sister, he decides to do it. All right. Uh, but he can't really think of a way to prevent Yui or Yukino from becoming president. So he gets some help from Simon Kuza, from Saika, from Saki Kawasaki. Uh, <laughs> the names of the series are great. Um, and eventually he ends up deciding to negotiate with Iroha to try to convince her to become president. Okay, and the way he goes about doing this is he has Saki come up with a list of believable candidates from for a president that could actually get a decent amount of support, okay? And he creates Twitter fan pages slash support pages for these people, and they all get a bunch of followers to the point where the total amount of followers among, uh, between all the accounts ended up being a third of the student body, okay? Then, <laughs> then he changed them all, he, cha he changed them all from like, Hayama support accounts, Yui support accounts, Yumiko support accounts, he changed them all to Yuroha support accounts. <laughs> and then, so now all of a sudden it looked like she had all this support. Which, that's, it's a blatant lie, it's pretty much a giant bluff, but the only one he really needed to convince of it was Yuroha, and it worked on her, alright, and by doing, by having by proving that she did actually have the, by proving that she had the support of a third of the student body, he was able to convince her to decide to become president by essentially using her pride against her and her interest in Hayama, pretty much. That's what he did. That's what he did. He said, you know, when you fail to become president and get, like, no votes, all those people who supported you initially to try and force you to become president, they're just going to be laughing at you behind your back. Your entire, you'll just become a complete joke. That probably pisses you off, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> he was just using her pride against her. And then her interest in Hayama. So, you know, even if it is tough, you can always just ask Hayama for help. You know he'll say yes. And then he can end up walking you home at the same time. It's a win-win for you. So, he, he ends up doing that, convincing her to legitimately run. And once she does decide to legitimately run, and like, to actually want to win, then Yukino and Yui are just like, well, I mean, I get, like, if she wants to win now, then there's no reason for us to run. So, they just drop out, and, uh, and then everything is okay. Everything's K, okay. alright? And the, the one thing I'm curious about, though, with this entire plan of, of uh, Hickey's is whether or not the people who had the Twitter accounts made for them, whether they found out. Because it, it looked like Yui did. It really did, because when, when, when Hickey was telling them about these support accounts, Yui was like, support accounts? And she looked at her phone, she was like touching and stuff. I mean, like, it made it look like she legitimately that she actually noticed her support account and thought it was actually for her. So because of that, she recognized, she actually realized the fact that Hickey was just lying to all these people and to Iroha to make it look like they supported Iroha. But she just decided to accept it because 
in the end, Iroha did actually decide to run and actually want to win. So and so she had some big vibe with him, like, all right, I guess. All right, I don't I don't mind the fact that you just lied to all these people and to Iroha. I don't mind because it happened to work out in this case, and you didn't end up sacrificing yourself to do it. So you know what? That's you know I'll I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Uh, Yukino, on the other hand, Yukino, she, she, I think she was kind of, kind of annoyed at Hikigaya for assuming that she was only running for specific, for the reasons that he had assumed, like, uh, to prevent Iroha from winning or because of Haruna's provocation, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like, I feel like the reasons, I think... There, there's a chance that she might have actually been sincere in her desire to run for president, because actually towards the end of the towards the end of the episode, uh, Hickey starts to think about what Yukino said about uh, you know you thought you understood, didn't you? She, he starts to think about that. And he says that there are some people who just can't bring themselves to act unless they're given a problem and a reason to solve it. So. Maybe it's not that Yukino didn't want to become president. Maybe it's just she didn't realize she wanted to be president until she was given a problem and a reason. Maybe that's it. And maybe that's why she said this, because she was actually sincere and Hickey was just assuming that it was because of these other things. But in reality, those other things were just the push she needed to realize that she actually wanted it in the first place. But because the fact that the request had changed and Iroha actually did want to win, she decides, you know what, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll drop out, I guess. All right. So maybe that was it. All right. But um, that's that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting to watch to see how that develops. The continue the how the relationship between Yukino and Hiki continues to develop. That'll be interesting because. It, it, the two of them, like, they just don't understand each other at all. And they don't understand themselves either, which also makes it interesting. It's actually kind of funny. But I'm just interested in seeing how this develops from here. Okay. Um, but eventually, Yukino does end up leaving to go talk to the teachers or something to make the, to make her drop out official and Yui's. Right. And we end up, because of her leaving, we end up getting these nice moments with Yui and Hiki being alone. Okay. And she ends up telling him that she doesn't think his methods can be changed because guilt doesn't go away. All right. And I was thinking about this. All right. And maybe, maybe she's insinuating that Hickey feels guilty about something that happened in his past. And it is because of that that he allows himself to be hurt as a way to punish himself for that thing. Like, maybe maybe that's what she's saying. Um, I think it could also be that she's just talking about herself, you know, and how she felt in this particular situation, and then she thinks that Hickey may feel the same way, okay? Because, like, when you think about it, Hickey got hit by a car protecting her dog. I'm pretty sure she feels legitimately guilty about that. As a matter of fact, we see it throughout the series, and Hickey assumes at one point that she's only being nice to him because she feels guilty for it, okay? And I'm pretty sure she does feel guilty. It's pretty hard to not feel guilty about that, okay? So maybe it's because she feels guilty about that that she decided to act in the way that she did, which was essentially to sacrifice herself to prevent him and Yukino from hurting, like to prevent the club from breaking down which, as we established earlier with Komachi, Hiki would probably, whether he realized it or not, would probably be hurt by that. Okay, so she sacrificed herself to prevent him from hurting, despite the fact that she and other people criticized Hiki for sacrificing himself to prevent other people from hurting. Okay, so she essentially became a hypocrite here. All right, and I'm pretty sure she realized that when she first made the decision to run, because she knew deep down that she didn't actually want that, but she decided to do it anyway, and sacrifice herself to prevent those two, and specifically Hikigaya, from being hurt, okay? She had her reasons for wanting to... She knew that she knew that she'd be doing what she doesn't want Hiki to do, but she decided to do, to do it anyway because she thought that her reasons for doing it 
for reason enough. Like, she... I, so, I guess what I'm trying to say is this statement by her may be her acknowledging that sometimes you find yourself in a position where despite the fact that you know you're just hurting yourself, despite the fact that you know you're just sacrificing yourself, sometimes the reasons for acting in that way are incredibly difficult to reject. So, because of the fact that her knowing she'd be a hypocrite for doing it wasn't enough to stop her from doing it, this is her realizing that it's difficult for Hickey to change his methods as well. Okay, because she couldn't do it, even though she knew it would make her a hypocrite. So, Hick, it, it, if it's tough for her to do it, it's probably tough for Hickey to change her to change his methods as well. All right, so I think that's the gist of what's of what's going on. Well, I, guess, I guess the bottom line, the bottom line here with the statement is that Yui understands Hickey a little bit more now. She understands that it's difficult to change your methods when they work in a way that you want them to work. All right, especially if it means helping people. Especially if it's helping someone you care about. All right, which which it, it, which it was for Yui. For Hiki, it's not so much that at all because half the people he helps, he doesn't even care about in the first place. Like Ebina, he doesn't care about her really. As a matter of fact, that was actually kind of funny when Epina mentioned it. Like, and when Epina told him, I like the I like the way you can just talk to people you don't care about like this. I I actually like that. I actually I actually respect that about you. All right. So he doesn't care about her. He didn't care about the one girl from the end of season one who wanted to be the festival chairman but wanted to push the work on other people. You know, she didn't care about her. You know, but he still sacrificed himself to help them. So it's not like he cares about them the way he cares for him. So it's 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 extreme for Hickey in one, in one way, but it's extreme for Yui in, in a completely different way. It's extreme for a Hickey guy because he's a hardcore loner who's been through so much and has this crazy idea of how humanity is. Uh, well, actually, most of the things he thinks about humanity are actually true. Like he's actually pretty accurate in his analysis. He just goes to unnecessary extremes. But in that sense, he is extreme, and Yui was extreme because of the fact that she actually cared about Hickey guy. When Hickey guy doesn't care about half the people he sacrifices himself for, all right. But anyway, anyway, I'm getting off that. But the point is, Yui understands Hickey guy a little bit more because she understands how difficult it is to believe something and want something and decide to sacrifice yourself to accomplish that goal of helping that person. Okay, so like she she understands him more now. That, that's the point. She understands it more. All right. Um, and, you know, honestly, it's that moment. Like, honestly, be before that moment, I was thinking the episode was, you know, cool, I guess. Like, it wasn't, I, I wasn't really thinking the episode was good, per se. Like, it was it was good, but it wasn't, like, really good, like some of the past episodes have been. All right. So, like, but that point right there with this scene with Yui made me think that it was actually really decent, so I'll give it, I'll give this episode a 7.5 out of 10, alright, this episode of Snafu, aka Horigairu, gets a 7.5 out of 10, and that's that, you guys, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.